Hello everyone, I'm Martin Tugana III of the International Marketing Group Wealth Builders. For this session, ang i-discuss po natin ay building a solid financial foundation. What do we mean by this? So tulad ng isang bahay or isang building, dapat pulido ang it ang pundasyon niya. Lalo na kung uh, marami itong floors or stories, right? Otherwise, kung hindi matibay ang pundasyon ng isang building or establishment, isang bagyo, isang lindol, guguho ito kaagad. Ganun din when it comes to our finances. What if nagkasakit tayo? What if nagka-emergency? Or what if nawala ng trabaho? What are the possible consequences? Unang-una, pwedeng ano, maubos yung inipon natin. Say, for example, isang emergency, yung inipon natin for five years, pwedeng mawala ka agad. Or pwede rin namang uh, mawala ng trabaho. Or kung walang nagpapautang, pwedeng magsangla tayo ng mga ari-arian sa paluging presyo. Of course, those situations, we don't want to happen to ourselves. And of course, to our friends. That's why it's very, very important to know how to build a solid or a very strong financial foundation. So just like anything else, to become solid, to become strong, it takes time. So for this, I will be discussing the three most important concepts when it comes to personal finance. So the first concept is what we call the X-curve concept. Anong sinasabi nito? There is a line from our left going right. Ayan yung age natin. So each year, we grow older. Younger, getting older. That we cannot control. So as we grow older, we have to take care of two lines. So the line going up, which is the blue line, that is what we call the law of building wealth. So theoretically, it means na ano, habang tumatanda tayo, dapat ang ipo natin ay tumataas. The reality check, tumataas nga ba yung ipo natin habang tumatagal? Sa ibang bagay or kadalasan, baliktad. Kung kailan naman tayo nagkatrabaho, saka naman dumadami ang utang. In short, mahirap mag-ipon. A lot of people find it challenging to really save up. But then our goal for the savings line is what? from minimum savings or zero savings to eventually having big savings, lalong-lalo now when we retire. So, we mentioned na challenging mag because of the other line which goes the opposite direction we call responsibility line. So, ang goal naman natin dito, ngayon, ang dami-dami na, dami, dami, dami nating responsibilidad, our goal is to eventually zero out those responsibilities. So, anong ibig sabihin natin na zero out yung responsibility? Ibig sabihin niya na kalimutan natin yung mga obligasyon natin. So, ang ibig sabihin niya lang is, when we retire, lalong-lalo na sa panahon na wala na tayong income or physically, we're not capable to do work anymore, dapat lahat ng pangangailangan natin, may pera tayong magagamit. So that, in details, we discuss later. So right now, anong sitwasyon natin? So we have these needs. Namely, food, shelter, clothing, education, health. And we say these are all permanent. When we get old, we still need to eat. We still need a house to stay, clothes. Tumataas lalong-lalo ng healthcare needs and we should be debt-free. Anong kailangan natin to answer these needs? We need money. That's why our situation right now is what? We work for the money. In return, we receive this income. This income, we use to answer this responsibilities or needs. But we have to remember, this income is temporary hindi garantisadong palaging andyan ang income. So we have temporary income answering what? Permanent needs. So there is imbalance. We have temporary income answering permanent needs. So we say our situation right now is less secure. That's why we really have to work hard for the money. But the problem is, what if something happens? What if mamatay tayo? What if we um, get critically ill? What if we get disabled? What happens to the income? So income stops. Pag namatay tayo, wala na tayo sa payroll. 
wala na yung income. Pero our needs, our responsibilities to our family stay there. So the big question now is, saan kukunin ng ating pamilya ang pera para saluhin ang mga responsibilidad na naiwan natin? And worse, ang namamatay sa atin, anong iniiwan? Utang or kayamanan? Kadalasan utang. So wala na nga tayong iniwang pera, utang pa yung iniwan natin, mangungutang pa sila para mailibing lang tayo ng disente, e paano pa yung mga naiwan natin ng mga responsibilidad? So really, this financial risk is too big. What if we die too soon? Yung namatay, walang problema. Ang may malaking problema ay yung naiwan. So in personal finance, to adjust this risk, the solution is insurance. So I would always tell this that insurance is a way of what? Making fortune out of misfortune, right? So misfortune na namatayan tayo, but at least with that misfortune, kung may insurance, may darating naman na malaking pera. So just imagine, you lost your spouse, pero after a month, you will receive 10 million. I'm not telling na to be happy or to rejoice na namatay yung spouse mo. But then again, at least, di ba, Mawawala yung burden, more specifically in terms of finances, kasi may sasalo sa mga responsibilidad na naiwan niya. So that is the purpose of insurance. We don't get insurance to benefit from it by ourselves. It's really more on to protect our family. But the problem with insurance is to get the money or to get the cash, something should happen. Either we die, we get disabled, or we get critically ill. So what if nothing happens? So that would lead us to the second financial risk. What if naman we live too long? So that's the opposite of the first. On the first, namatay tayo kaagad. Dito naman on the second risk, hindi tayo mamatay-matay. Problema ba yun? Okay, life is a blessing. But then sometimes, or oftentimes, I would say, it also becomes a curse. Why? Ang nangyayari ho, na unang maubos ang pera kaysa mamatay tayo. And that itself is a problem. Imagine, buhay ka, kakain ka, nagpapacheck up ka, kailangan mo magbayad ng kuryente, ng ilaw, pero walang perang pumapasok. So the big question now is, where will we get the money to answer all of these needs? Marjun, sa anak ko? Pwede, pero there are two issues. Capable ba yung anak mo or willing ba yung anak mo? Pwedeng willing, pero hindi capable. Or pwedeng capable naman, issue sa asawa na magbigay siya ng pera sa'yo. So I will always tell parents, never ever depend your retirement to your children. So the solution to the stress is not our children, not our government, not other people, but investment. So investment is what? You have what? You take care of your future because you have money working for you or that's living on the interest of your savings. So true enough, you have money working for you. So clearly, there should be transition from us working hard for the money to eventually money or your big savings working for you. So example, you targeted to have 10 million when you retire. So invest the 10 million probably on a fixed income fund, like 10% a year. So 10% of 10 million is how much? That's 1 million divided by 12, at least you have 80 plus thousand a month. So that's clearly money or your 10 million working for you. But it could only work if in the first place we manage to increase our savings line. So bakit hindi ba tumataas ang savings line natin? Because our equation is what? We receive our income minus expenses. Whatever is left would be for expenses. And sad to say, that equation doesn't work. We could always reason out bakit kailangang bilhin to, bakit kailangang uh, mag-travel, etc., etc. So, the right formula is what? We, call, we also call it the abundance formula. So, income minus savings is equal to expenses. Or income minus tithe, you give back to the church, give back to the community, minus savings is equal to expenses. So what are the allocations? So you have 100% net income, 10% tithes, 
20% savings, expenses should be at most 70% of what you're earning. The second concept tells us it's not enough to work hard for the money. Equally important to that is to also know how does money work hard for us? So you have your hard-earned money and letting that hard-earned money to also work hard for you. So we call this the rule of money, or sometimes you call it the rule of 72. The formula is you have 72, which is fixed, divided by the interest, which is the variable component, is equal to the number of years it will take your money to double. So why 72 of all the numbers? Say, for example, this year, may isang daan tayo. We invested it on like savings account, which gives us 1% a year. That's even uh, higher than the actual, which is 0.0252%. So on the first year, we have 100 pesos earning 1% a year. So the following year, we have 100 plus the 1% of 100, which is 1, giving us 101. On the third year, we have 102.01. So yung piso na interest the following year, nag interest then the following or the next year. So yung interest nag interest So bakit 72? Because this 100 to double to become 200, it will only take 72 years instead of 100 years. So what's the implication of that? Example, 29 years old tayo ngayon, may 10,000 nilagay sa banko at 1% a year. How long will it take us to double that money? Or anong edad na natin at the time that our 10,000 becomes 20,000? So using the formula, 72, we substitute per, uh, the percent or the variable component with 1 as the interest. So that 72 divided by 1 is equal to 72 years. So 29 plus 72, or oh, 101 years old na tayo sa kapalang siya ng 20,000. So two issues. Unang-una, buhay pa ba tayo? Aabot ba tayo ng 101 years old? Or kung buhay man tayo, abutin man natin yan, anong purchasing power ng 20,000 at a time? So this concept would illustrate us for money to compound, number one, it should be given enough time. The earlier you start, the better. And of course, the importance of knowing the proper interest. So what's the use of putting your money long-term in the bank, which earns less than 1%, if the inflation rate is around 5% or even more? So what if we try other facilities? Say, for example, time deposit, which could probably give us 4%. So going back to the formula we mentioned earlier, so 72 divided by 4 is equal to 18. So every 18 years, dumodoble yung pera natin. On this example, we have a person 29 years of age. He has a capital of 100,000 pesos or seed in money of 100,000 pesos. So every 18 years, that money doubles. So 29 plus 18, so 47, 200,000. Another 18 years at 65, 400,000 pesos. 65 is already retirement age. But the question is, is 400,000 pesos enough to retire? No, it's not enough. Way, way below. What if we double the interest? We make it 8. So 72 divided by 8, that means every 9 years, the doubling pera natin. So Going back to the same example, so every nine years, so at 38, 200,000, at 47, 400,000, at 56, 800,000, at 65, 1.6 million pesos. Is this enough? Hindi pa rin. Pero something to notice. I thought if we double the interest, yung 400,000 would also double. But how many 400,000s are there in 1.6 million? So that's fourfold, not just twice or not just two four hundred thousands. But what if we put it at twelve percent? Because what happens in reality, we put our money in the bank. Pero ang banko hindi yan ilalagay ang pera natin sa vault. They would also reinvest that. Example in a facility which earns twelve percent, which is still conservative. So at twelve percent, going back 
again to the formula, 72 divided by 12 is equal to 6. So every 6 years, dumodoble siya. So we have the same example at 29, 100,000. But then here, at the age of 65, that 100,000 becomes 6.4 million pesos. Is it enough? Probably yes or probably not, but clearly much, much better compared to 400,000 and 1.6 million. But the thing is, we put our money here as a 4%. It was the bank which repositioned our money to 12%. So magkano ang ibabalik sa atin ng banko? 400,000 pesos. Magkanong kinita nila? 6 million pesos. In our perspective, that's our loss only due to the fact that we do not know where is 12%. So very obvious kaya ang pinakamatatas na buildings, whatever city you go, ang mga banko. Example, where I live, where I work, here in Makati, along Ayala Ave, we have what? We have HSBC, RCBC. PBCOM, PS Bank, Metro Bank, PPI, Security Bank, Standard Chartered, etc., etc. But I want to make it clear, we have nothing against the bank. My point is, if you want to invest on a long-term basis, hindi pede sa banko. Kasi a bank account or a savings account is designed for accessibility. So if gusto mo ng accessible, syempre mababa ang interest niyan. So there is always a trade-off. So kung gusto mo ng medyo mataas na interest, of course, may mga holding period because money takes time to grow. To summarize what we discussed, so what now should be the proper structure of a solid financial foundation? A lot of people would want to invest outright. As we've said, money takes time to grow. So ang gusto natin mangyari sa pera natin si investment, nagdadagdag lang muna tayo. Hindi yung every now and then pabawasan. Diba? Come to think of it, lumalago ba yung pera natin sa banko? Hindi. Kasi anong mas madalas, withdrawal or deposit? Withdrawal. So, Ang pera, para lumago, dapat ano, hindi mo na ginagalaw for a certain period. 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, nagdadagdag lang muna tayo. So para hindi natin magalaw ang pera sa investment, what you recommend is, dapat may emergency fund muna. Para kung magka-emergency man, dito ka kukuha. Right? Otherwise, kung magka-emergency, wala kang emergency fund, you will be tempted to pull out money from your investment. So, balik na naman tayo sa zero. So, you should have um, emergency fund first before investing. But the worst is, nagka-emergency, wala tayong ipon, wala tayong emergency fund. So, anong gagawin natin? Mangungutang. Diba? It would make no sense if nangutang ka sa 20% a month, tapos nag-iipon ka sa less than 1% a year. So this should be done chronologically. So eliminate debts first, establish your emergency fund, then saka mag-invest. But then going back to the first financial risk, but what if we die too soon? What if we get disabled? What if we got critically ill? Dun papasok ang importance ng insurance. Again, insurance is a privilege. It's not a right. So Habang bata ka pa, habang qualified pa tayo, habang insurable pa, get as much insurance as you can. So just imagine, if six months ago na matay ka, ano bang sitwasyon ng pamilya mo ngayon? Depende yan. Kung insured ka, at least maintain yung lifestyle nila or even higher. Kung wala, probably or likely mas mahirap. And of course, we don't want that. But we say health is wealth. Hence, the bottom most is healthcare. So sa healthcare, we have two types. You have short-term and long-term. Ang short-term, yun yung tinatawag na HMO, which is usually provided by, by our employer. Pero ang problema dyan, it's co-terminus with our employment. So the moment we resign, the moment we retired, wala na rin siya. So when do we get sick more often? Diba? When we get older. So the time that you need it more, saka naman siya wala. So that's why we really put emphasis or importance to really invest on long-term healthcare. Ang long-term healthcare, seven years ka lang mag invest seven years ka lang na magsasacrifice, pero at least lifetime yung coverage mo. So this one, 
matagal na siyang ginagawa in countries like the US. Kaya pansin natin doon, yung mga matatanda sa kanila could afford private nurse, caregiver, nasa private room or nasa suite. Unlike here in our country, exactly the opposite. Nasa ward, nagtuturoan yung mga anak kung sinong sasalo, etc. So, we don't want that to happen to ourselves. So, healthcare muna, insurance, eliminate debts, emergency fund, then investment. Because our ultimate goal is to have money working for us. So that's why we have to shield or protect that investment. Magkasakit man tayo, hindi ito magagalaw because we have healthcare. May mangyari man sa atin, mamatay man tayo, the disabled man tayo, hindi pa rin ito magagalaw because we have insurance. Hindi tayo mangungutang because we have emergency fund or hindi magagalo ang pera sa investment if magka-emergency because we have a proper fund. So this structure is really solid. And of course, mas madaling maitayo ang pundasyon na to kung meron tayong multiple sources of income. So again, I always tell people, don't be satisfied with just one salary or just one source of income. So challenge yourself to earn outside employment or to have part-time businesses. Kasi kung mas maraming pumapasok na pera, mas marami tayong income, mas maraming um, resources, mas madali natin maitatayo yung financial foundation natin. So this one is just a summary. So if you have questions, if you have specific concerns, you can always get in touch with me. Um, my contact numbers are here. So land, my landline is 02-507-5713. My mobile is 0917-822-6783. Or you can email me at mstogano3 at gmail.com. Or pinakamadali, Facebook. So that's also my FB account, Marjun Sigismundo Tugano III. Or you can click on this link. So I hope I imparted to you very important information that hopefully please um, execute them. So with that, thank you very much.